I always had the juice, but now I got the peach. Why does she say it like that? <laughs> hey, that was my review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta, episode 8. Now, this might come out on Tuesday. On Sunday, I was busy with Pride. On Monday, I was busy recovering. Uh, for this particular episode, I'm going to be recapping it on my first watch. It's normally on my second, so you're definitely going to be getting my initial reaction. So we open up the episode with a montage of what the ladies are doing, of course. We're with Drew for a minute, and just looking at the outside of this dropping with Drew, it looks like a scam. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was in one of those abandoned lots where you just have all these shady businesses and it's next to like a check cash-in or like a bail bonds place. Not only does the building look abandoned, but they have like cheap posters in the window with lost 50 pounds in six weeks taped on. It, it just doesn't look professional at all. But that's y'all girl. Like, I looked in my comments and apparently a lot of Drew lovers are in them. Next scene, we're at Sonya's residence, and she's talking to her sister about her day-to-day -day and some marital problems she's facing. So that fine husband of hers, she says that sometimes he's not emotionally and physically present, you know, for her and her child sometimes. And maybe it's because he travels for work. And then there's a discussion of her having a kid. She does not want another one, but her husband does. And if it looks like he's not even present, you know, for the first kid, like, you're going to bog her down with the second one? So, I, I see where she's coming from. She then tells her sister she's going to have to send him down soon and let him know that she's happy with the three family member household. Next, we're with Marlo and Sheree. It looks like they're at, like, a sauna house, and they're inviting Candy over. And Marlo is starting already. <laughs> like, by her asking the attendant, oh, y'all have something for my friend coming, like, on how to be a better friend? Uh, like, they are coming for Candy, and it, they're making it obvious. So Candy arrives, and she meets up with them, and she lets them know immediately that she will not be getting into the sauna and messing up her hair, because she got somewhere else to be, unlike these other two who have nowhere to be. I mean, at least she showed up. So this is how it's going to be. I mean, it looked like Candy came in with a bit of a chip on her shoulder. So she's going to be talking to them while she's outside of the sauna. And they're going to be talking to her from inside with the doors closed. Candy's like, let me just show up and see what these bitches got to say. Wow, so they're giving us this sauna scene like the first five minutes in the episode? Well, okay. I did not expect that. I thought they were going to give it to us like at the very end. So Sheree starts off the conversation saying that her and Candy used to be better friends, especially when they were the smalls together 10 years ago. Now, have they been friends for 10 years or just, you know, good co-workers? You know, because there's a difference. But according to Sheree, I mean, with production's receipts, they've been hanging out, they've been good girlfriends, but she feels that Candy has not checked up on her when it comes to her stupidity with Tyrone. Candy's defense is, I was waiting for you to come to me about it. Sheree then says that it's about checking up on her, and then Marlo chimes in as well, saying that maybe you should just call her more. And Candy is frustrated. She tells them both, why are y'all expecting so much out of me when it is definitely not returned? Marlo tries to bring up her foster care background, and Candy was like, don't even try it. We, we've heard it all before. Marlo then gets up and says, do you know what's going on with me right now? She's talking about her sister in the last episode, you know, taking care of the boys. She definitely reaching for them tiny violins. Candy then explains to her that her own family, you know, is looking to have more time with her. And then Marlo's like, okay, then, well, maybe that's something you need to work on if you're hearing it from everybody. The look on Candy's face. And then, shortly after, the conversation gets a little bit more passionate. Candy's like, I tried! Y'all make, y'all frustrate me! I tried to help y'all! I did listen to Candy speak on it. Like, I saw a clip saying they edited a lot out of this conversation, and it definitely looks like it. Because I'm confused how the conversation just escalated so quickly. We now have Marlo and Sheree comforting Candy because she's obviously upset. She says she is so annoyed by them. They then both tell Candy they're going to try to be better in their relationships with her. And then Candy looked like she's just ready for this scene to be over. I don't really see any fucks given on her end about what they're telling her. 
And that's where the scene ends. And Candy was right. Like, this scene looks edited to hell. Like, I feel like I got nothing out of this conversation. It was very surface. Next scene, we're back at Sonya's house and she's with her mom and she's cooking for her man when he gets home. Uh, it looks like Sonya's a little rusty in the kitchen, but that salmon does look good. Her with her kid, I mean, he's so cute, but um, definitely seeing this scene, I'm like, I don't want kids. I really don't because I like my life to just, you know, revolve around me. And speaking of kids, she has her husband home and she gets dressed looking good. He's enjoying the meal she made for him and now they get to have this conversation. So from her point of view, he's gone nearly half the month uh, to do his business, which is car service. And I get it, like if he's not there like half the month, but then once you pregnant again and have another kid, who's gonna take care of him? I totally get where she's coming from. Like if he's not there half the time, like, you know, who's gonna watch the kid if he's not there? You know, it's gonna be her. And if she has another kid, there's more stress on her. There's less time to do what she wants to do uh, career-wise while he's able to do it and she can't. So like I said, uh, and how I believe it should be her body, her choice. If she don't want a kid, it is what it is. This was like the, the plot for Salt Lake City, right? For that couple we shall not name. And I'm just hoping that we don't have another fine house husband that turns out to be an asshole. So she asked him, like, would you resent me if I said I don't want to have any more children? And he says he doesn't know. I always wonder, like, what's the motivation, like, for having a kid? Is, just, is it just for vain reasons? Like, do you just want a full family? Do you want another kid for your only child to play with? Like, there has to be a, a reason. But yeah, the conversation ends on that note where he doesn't know how to answer the question and it looks like nothing was resolved. <laughs> Just like the last conversation with Candy Marlowe and Sheree. Next scene we're with Sheree and she's talking to her new business manager that she hired. She's still trying to get She by Sheree off the line and we see a couple pieces from her um, September, spring, summer line. These clothes look late. Like, you can definitely find these in your bargain bin and Macy's or even JCPenney's. Uh, so next scene, we're with Marlo and her plotline kids. I mean, she's talking to them about um, honest work and she's trying to humble them. I guess. I mean, coming from Marlo, that's rich, but uh, good for her. She's talking to them again about their mother and how she's dealing with the situation. Uh, this is giving Best Fiends, so uh, fast forward. So next scene we're with Candy, Kenya, and friend of Moneta. They're all meeting at this place where um, it looks like you can make your own sense. Uh, we get a little background on Candy's friendship with Moneta. Uh, she knows her through Neo, and they've been friends ever since. Looks like Moneta got remarried as well. And I'm excited to see what she brings on this show. Y'all know the friend of on Housewives is basically an audition. Oh, correction. Uh, they're making sense for candles, I guess. Whatever. So as Candy's on the topic of one of her charity organizations, this is the perfect time for Kenya to inform her on what Marlo said about her in front of the other women. Saying that she tried to give use clothes to her foundation and saying that how she's not been a good friend. Candy is then telling her about how she met up with Marlon and Sheree and how they were coming at her unfairly. And Moneta and Kenya are vouching that Candy is a good friend. And I believe that. Like, I think if Candy fucks with you, she fucks with you. There are way too many people that will vouch for her. And, like, she takes care of her people. So now the conversation pivots to Drew, and it looks like she invited all the ladies to a Drop It With Drew event. And, <laughs> of course, they shade it a bit, saying, like, oh, it's her workout company? King is like, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so then they invite Moneta to go too. Oh goodness, and now we're talking about the vibrating panties again. <laughs> Cause you know Candy had to bring up her sex toys in some form or fashion on camera. And then King is like, yeah, let's talk about that. So now she wants to get Moneta's opinion on the vibrating panty gate. So when King brings up that the husbands can actually control the buzzer, you know, to the single ladies panties, that is where Moneta is like, okay, girl, I was with you for a second, but, you know, I can't vouch for you on that. And then Kenya brings up how Candy brought her minions scantily clad to her doorstep, you know, for an invite. So then Kenya tells her, I'm going to send the naked clown to your house while Blaze is home. <laughs> To send you an invite. Not her comparing um, her cousin and his floozy to a naked clown. <laughs> I mean, 
I can see the parallels. Uh-oh, so now this friendly little disagreement between Candy and Kenya has turned into a heated argument. They are going back and forth with each other. Kenya's like, Candy, you are wrong. Candy does not want to admit any type of wrongdoing. And then she throws in Kenya's face, well, if you're trying to bring husbands in it, you said that you would want to have sex with me in front of my husband. So let's not talk about respecting people. Now, do y'all agree with this comparison? Because I was like, uh, Candy, I think that could have just been a better way for you to uh, do the game. Like, the husband's being able to control other women's panties vibrating, not a good idea. Like, that was pro probably could have looked into that. But Kenya, she has done this with Cynthia on Ultimate Girls Trip, when she tried to make Cynthia look like she was doing something that wasn't her intention. They are yelling in this establishment. Like, there are people around them. Can y'all just imagine y'all made like a fun night out, you know, making candle scents together, and then the women across from you is talking about, I don't want your husband buzzing my pussy all night. Poor Mignetta, look like she's caught in an awkward situation now. She's doing her best to change the topic. Now, Kenya brings up a good point. You can't have a yes man as a friend, and I will say anybody that disagrees with Candy, she does not like it and does not look at the other side of things. Is she a cancer? Because that's a cancer trait, in my opinion, from what I've seen. And Candy is cool, of course, but I do think she likes being surrounded by yes men. Luckily for Kenya and Candy, they just move on from this argument and go back to Kiki. In. And she says the difference between, you know, her and Marlo, Marlo's going to stick at it and then try to get other people to turn against her. And of course, during this candle making, once the candles are finished, Candy names it Candy's Pussy. Yep. So next scene, it's the day of Drew's Drop It With Drew event. This is her first full appearance on the show, 35 minutes in, and I am not complaining about that. Yes, she was in the beginning, but it was only part of a montage, and I think I prefer it that way. Now, bravo. I, I get that y'all are part of, like, the NBC Universal Synergy, but I get it. Like, uh, the Minion movie, it's coming up, but why is it so big plastered in the upper right corner of the TV? Like, it shouldn't be blocking people's faces. So we cut to doing her confessional, and it looks like the motive behind this event is to prove to the ladies that her business is 100% legitimate. So half the ladies arrive, and I gotta say, they're very bold to weigh themselves on camera. A lot of housewives wouldn't do that. We cut to Candy in her confessional, and she's wondering, um, is this like a real facility? Look, with Helper Production, they messy. They showed just three days ago what it looked like and what it looks like now. And it looks very different. I can see her renting that space for a cute three to four months for filming and then just abandoning it. Like, y'all, like, if anybody in Atlanta, my Atlanta supporters, please report to me. Go down there and see if that uh, facility is still there. Uh-oh, so the rest of the ladies on their way, uh, they're all together, Sonya, Sheree, and Marlo. I know as soon as they pull up, they're going to have something to say. Ha-ha! <laughs> what I told y'all, like, as soon as they pulled up, they are roasting the front of that building. At least the inside looks significantly less cheap. We see Marlo straight up ignore Candy as she walked past her, and Candy clocked it and immediately brought it up to Moneta. Um, okay, Moneta husband, uh, he kind of fine. So before the ladies all start working out, Sheree gets their attention from these uh, form-fitting tights that she's wearing, and she lets them know that it's all from She by Sheree, including the gym mat that she brought. Now see, Sheree, like people would actually buy this, especially the mat, the, the gym mat is cute. Um, she said it's coming soon on She by Sheree. Like, she got the body too, I just don't understand it. Is she just lazy? Because if Drew can get this all together with this drop it with Drew and she's not athletic at all, then Sheree should have no problem. And here go production, Shane and Sheree in the confessional again. She say, oh, it's all coming to you soon this spring. Followed by the caption by production, summer, September. We then see Sonya talking to Toxic Ralph, and she actually wants his perspective on her husband wanting baby number two. She must be desperate if she's asking for Ralph's advice. And of course, Toxic Ralph is going to be on her husband's side and saying, oh, look, we got three kids in our household, and we're just as busy as y'all. Yeah, and, and look how y'all marriage is working out. 
And I really don't agree with him telling her that kids or the excuse of you being busy is the excuse for you not having more kids. If a woman does not want to have kids, that is her choice. Like, it could be for any reason. If Ralph had it his way, Drew would be barefoot and pregnant in the house cooking and cleaning. So Marlo addresses Candy and Candy tells her, oh, you're speaking to me now because earlier you walked right past me. And Marlo gives some weak excuse and Candy lets her know, yeah, I heard you was talking about me, saying how I was a bad friend to everybody. Y'all were discussing it. But before they can go back and forth, they both agree that this is Drew's event, so they're not going to take away from it. So it looks like they're about to start. It looks like all the ladies are there with the exception of Kenya. Kenya always late, ain't she? So then we see that Ty gets a phone call and it looks pretty serious. And he tells Candy to come out with him and get her stuff too. Everyone else is just looking around, just wondering, is she okay? We find out that someone jumped their community gate and is just sitting on their property. And that's when their housekeeper, who also is their nanny, called the police. So we're back inside and Sheree and Marla, they don't care about Candy. They're just trying to be nosy, obviously. So most of the women are outside just checking on Candy and it looks like she has to leave. So now we're back inside and Drop It With Drew has begun. Uh, some of the ladies are good at working out, some of them are not. We cut to Marla in her confessional, and she's like, I don't work out, I get lipo like Drew does. <laughs> oh my god, Sheree! <laughs> Drew, it looked like she don't know what she's doing. Like, of course this whole thing is a scam. But then we cut to Sheree in her confessional, and she's saying, based on how Drew's doing these moves, she's not surprised that she looks like a busted can of biscuits. Wow! We see Kenya finally arrives. It looked like she at least 45 minutes or an hour late. She just comes walking in while everybody else is working out. So it looks like the workout's over. We see Sonya telling Marlo, this is way too advanced. Like, Drew can barely do these moves. <laughs> oh, so we finally get the tea. Finally! Like, behind this business. It all makes sense now. So how it works is, like, her business partner... Um, she has five locations in Chicago, and she hit up Drew for the Atlanta location. So, basically, Drew just slapped her name on somebody else's business. Oh, the ladies are going to have a field day with this. And their production plays us a flashback where they caught her ass in a lie. She's a scammer, y'all. That's why I don't see it for her. She's phony. So yeah, her poor business partner. I don't think she expected to be grilled like that, but the ladies are just getting all the tea right now. Like Drew basically just slapped her name on it. She's also trying to talk for her business partner and try to lie. King is like, will you let her talk? They caught you, Drew. It was not called Drop It With Drew. It was called the 21 Program. So during this moment, she feels shaded, and then she tells the ladies, well, some people's businesses still haven't came off the ground. We're still waiting. And she points out Sheree. Who's not seen? Drew felt embarrassed, so now she had to feel to embarrass somebody else. Sheree lets Drew know, honey, you're just the face of something. This business ain't even yours. So thankfully, Sheree and Drew don't go at it. So then the next topic of conversation is Candy, even though she's not here. So then Mignetta clocks in as the friend of, unless the ladies know that Candy heard from somebody that y'all were talking about her and she just wants to know their perspective on it. So then, you know, with the process of elimination, they easily find out that it was Kenya that went back to Candy. So Marlo is feeling some type of way that she did that, but why would any of these ladies feel some type of way? They all go behind each other's backs and talk about the other. So they can't really be mad at Kenya. And yes, I am defending Kenya. But Marlon is annoyed that Kenya just singled her out because Sheree also was talking about Candy's friendship. Kenya tells Marlon, well, she not fucking with you right now. And Marlon was like, oh, am I supposed to die? I, I can't dine at five-star restaurants anymore? Ooh, Marlo. Oh, Marlon. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Let's not get on Candy's five-star chicken shack. It's the business that's thriving. So now Kenya and Marlo are going back and forth. Marlo's tired of Kenya's shit now. She asks her, can you teach me how to be a friend, Kenya? Kenya? And then she brings up Mark and her fake booty. And I'm just like, 
here we go. Kenya's telling Marlo how big of a fool she is. And you know Marlo, she's gonna go for the bottom of the barrel reads on appearance. She's talking about her makeup, probably her skin, whether she got her lips done. And of course Marlo comes with the you can't keep a man, Kenya. And I'm sure Kenya has been hearing this for years. And then she tells Marlo, but where your man at, Marlo? Marlo says, well, I don't want a man. I don't need a man to belittle me like he belittled you. Here she goes, she's starting to go below the belt. So they're hurling insults back and forth. Marlo's getting closer in Kenya's space and Kenya's like, get out of my face, get out of my face. Her hand is this close to Marlo's face and a skirmish can break out at any second. And it looks like the lady's gonna try to get in between, but look, Marlo versus Kenya in a fight? I'm not biased, but Marlo is probably gonna wash King. I mean, check Marlo's charges. She has no problem assaulting somebody. Kenya, she has class. Well, it looked like production had to step in and they're separating the ladies because, I mean, it could have been just one more moment and we would have got a fight. Now, wait a minute, Kenya talking some big shit now, telling Marlo she gonna get fucked up and they had to like get Kenya out of there and not Marlo? Uh, I don't know Kenya. Like, Marlo have her hands behind her back. I think Marlo wanted Kenya to touch her because it would have been over. Marlo would have put that work on Kenya. Kenya would have got molly -whopped. And I love how everybody in the background is just acting like a fight wasn't just about to break out. I wonder if uh, people had to surrender their phones before they can film. I can't see someone not pulling their phones out while this is happening. The ladies are all separated now. Marlo's having her say. King is having her say. King is like, we can go back and forth all day. Just don't get in my face or there's going to be a problem. Or what? Or what? So Kenya leaves. It looks like Drew's event over. So now the ladies are all just talking. Marlo tells uh, Moneta that she doesn't come for people's mother, husbands, or kids. And that is a lie. <laughs> and production is letting us know that. Next scene, we're at Candy's house. It looks like production followed her as she was on her way back home. There's police out front. And then we find out from her housekeeper what really happened. So she managed to get footage of the intruder. And it's some desperate sissy at Candy's gate saying he's related to Beyonce as well as T.I. As well as he was told to come over by Candy because he's a songwriter. Ooh, people are crazy. At the end of the day, at least everybody's okay and there wasn't no Dorit situation. But I would be very alarmed in that community if someone can easily just get by security like that. So we're back at Drew's event and Sonya and her are having a one-on-one. -on -one. It looks like they're done beefing, for now at least. She's talking to Drew about her situation with her husband. And just like with Ralph, I would not solicit advice from Drew. Like, she is more so concerned with making the man happy. Like, what if he resents you? Well, what if Sonya resents him? Like, she brings up that point. It looked like Sonya knows not to take Drew's advice <laughs> because, I mean, look at their relationship. I hope Sonya does what she wants to do and doesn't feel pressured by her man or anybody to have another child. So they end on that. Sheree and Marlo, they're going to get some barbecue. And that is where the episode ends. So I like this episode. It was entertaining. Um, my theory for this season, um, I think they're trying to phase Candy out. Like, especially hearing from Candy that they heavily edited that scene between her, Marlo, and Sheree. They really making Candy work this season, and I think they want to make Candy quit instead of just phasing her out. And I think Lil' Key Production is telling Marlo to egg on Candy some more. Because look, next season, I wouldn't mind Phaedra as well as Portia coming back. And if we got to sacrifice Candy, so be it. And that's my opinion. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. But with that, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all for the next episode. Bye.